Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Ann and Jason. Put your names together. Thank you, Ann and Jason, for providing our pre service music this morning. I am Sandra Thomas, one of the pastors here, Warren Coral, our senior pastor, and I'll be leading in worship today along with our organist, Jason Boyd, and our pianist, Donna Baker. Our singers today are Cindy Dumas, Rebecca Doyle, A.R. Williams, and Warren Coyle. We sing with us this morning. We're so grateful to have our musicians that come and play for us and sing for us on a regular basis. Many of you have been asking, when are we going to be able to have church together in person? Our Bishop James Swanson sent out an email this week requesting that for the safety of all congregations that we refrain from worship in person until May 31st at the earliest. And um, we will be deciding throughout May if you will make some decisions based on what's going on in the, in the public and with the coronavirus as to when we'll be able to gather again. But the earliest will be on May 31st. So I hope that answers some of the questions that you have been asking about that. Today, we're going to have an agape meal. Uh, we did this on Monday Thursday, for those of you that were with us on Monday Thursday. And we'll be sharing in uh, water and a bowl. You can have something at your home. You might want to have a candle to light. Uh, you might want coffee and a bagel. You might want milk and a donut. You might want water and bread. Whatever your choice of food and beverage, we hope that you will have that with, with you at this time so that you can share that meal with us. We ask you now to open your hearts and open your homes as we worship God and bring the light of Christ into our home here in your home.
And now if everyone would stand wherever you are able and sing with us. to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, 
They broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
um, of the agape. Agape is a, a Greek word. It means love. And we gather in the love feast, which is part of our tradition as Methodists. We borrowed it from the Moravian Church, and we come together in fellowship over this, this meal. God is with us, and we are not alone. Christ is risen, and he has met us and blessed us and fed us on the road that leads us home in communion with the Holy Spirit who makes us one in Christ Jesus. We gather as family. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us as we lift our hearts to you. You lead us beside still waters and restore our souls. Your son Jesus is our gentle shepherd who has gone through the dark valley and been raised to new life, bringing us new and abundant life. And so together we join our voices in praise to you. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The words of Scripture point to Jesus, God's Word incarnate. Be assured of God's abiding presence in every circumstance. Jesus said, those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Take your glass of water. Remember, without water, there is no life. Christ invites us to drink from the spring of the water of life, that the promise of eternal life will be ours. As you drink, know that God's love is flowing into you to restore and bring comfort to your soul. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. Christ broke bread and miraculously fed thousands. When he gave himself for us, he broke bread and made a new covenant. In the breaking of bread, he was made known to his disciples in Emmaus. In the breaking of bread, the apostolic church joined in fellowship with glad and generous hearts. Bread reminds us that like individual grains of wheat gathered together to make a single loaf, we who may be scattered now are still one body in Christ. As you eat the bread, remember those times of fellowship with others. Remember how Christ was made known to you in the breaking of the bread and Holy Communion. Know that Christ is present with you, preparing a table in the midst of every adversity for you, a place set for you with Him. And He anoints you 
with the spirit of wholeness now and always. Gracious Lord, make your presence known to us now and always. For we pray in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. We've had a number of prayer requests to come through the church office and on um, emails, and we want to lift those up to you. Uh, celebrations, concerns, and condolences. We especially want to remember today the family and friends of Edna Massengill on her passing. We want to remember the family and friends of Lee Harrison of Laurel on his passing. Miss Edna, of course, was Ron Massengill's mother and one of our pastors, Lamar. And Lee is the father of Karen Williams. You'll notice also we have four rosebuds on the altar today. Those are a celebration of all of our April births. The most recent baby born was Kenneth Dean Robertson, who was born April 20th to Lori Ann Johnson and Adam Robertson. Grandparents are Cheryl and Ken Johnston, and we want to celebrate new life in the midst of all we're dealing with. We've also had a number of folks who've had prayer recurring uh, concerns and been in the hospital. We want to remember Raymond Hall, who is at the University Medical Center. We want to continue to pray for Pat Kelly, who had surgery this past week. We want to pray for Betty Mabry, who fell and broke her foot. Uh, we want to continue to pray for Fred Price, who was hospitalized briefly, and now he's back at home. We want to remember Fred and his family. We also remember baby Oliver Reed, he was admitted to University Medical Center. He's been discharged and is on his way back to health. We want to give thanks for that. We continue to pray for Brad Sessoms, who had a heart catheterization at St. Dominic's this past week. We want to remember Jean Williams, who was admitted to Baptist Hospital with a severe uh, case of shingles. That's very complicated, and so we want to pray her continued healing. We pray for Linda Wright, who had a valve replacement done on, on Wednesday, this past Wednesday. We've been asked to pray for Seaborn LZ of Cave City, Kentucky, who has a mass on his lung and other health issues. We pray for Pam Madrano, who has pneumonia. She's at St. Dominic's Hospital. We pray, pray for Bradley Hales of Elzona in a nursing facility who's been diagnosed with COVID-19. We want to remember Sandra Gardner, who's in the ICU. That's one of our, uh, the mother of one of our uh, preschool teachers. Another friend of Sandra Bates, Janice Wilson of Macomb, Mississippi. We want to pray for her as she is dealing with health issues. We pray for Winnie McCollum, diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, who's a friend of Sarah Meeks. And we want to pray for Darlene Baker's sister, Sherry Allen, who's, who lives in Tennessee. There's so many, there are also so many things for which we can be thankful. God's presence in every adversity, that no matter where we go, no matter what we're doing, the Lord is with us. And so now, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and gracious God, you care for us in all the ways of our lives. We ask that you receive your people's praise for your guiding us in your ways of security. You lead us in your peaceful path and nourish us with your abundance. Great and glorious is your holy name. You knew well that we needed a shepherd because we, like sheep, are always prone to go astray. Help us to keep our eyes on the path you've laid for us and not seek to go our own way. We've received everything, including our salvation, from your hand. Help us to share it in ways that allow others to hold it in common with us. As we focus on our own suffering, may we never ignore Jesus' suffering for us. As we remember your abundance of grace, may we always share your gifts with others. Jesus has shown himself to be the gate 
into the reality of your reign, which can only be seen through the eyes of faith. By the power of your Holy Spirit, open our eyes. Keep them focused on Jesus, that we may lead others into your sheepfold. We lift up before you those whom we've named and those who remain named only in our hearts. There are many this day who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Lead them beside your still waters. Make them to lie down in green pastures of rest and restore them. And especially today, Lord, we celebrate new birth. And we mourn the loss of those who have been dear to us. For Edna and for Lee. We pray for those who need your continued healing touch, whether in the hospital or recovering at home. We pray especially for Raymond, Pat, Betty, Fred, Oliver, Brad, Jean, Linda, Seaborn, Pam, Bradley, Sandra, Janice, Winnie, and Sherry. May your will for their lives be accomplished, that we might sing your praises for bringing them wholeness by your gentle hand. We come before you with our prayers and approach you through the gate which is Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, and our Lord and Savior. In your mercy hear us and answer us in your love and grace. For we pray in the name and spirit of him who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As you are able in your homes, let us stand together and join in singing.
Now I say, you know, I see y'all, but I can't see y'all. I hope y'all understand what I mean by that. We're all together, but we're together in the Holy Spirit's presence, and the Holy Spirit is what grinds us together in one. So today I want to look at 1 Peter, the epistle, Peter's writing. Traditionally, he is in prison, perhaps, in Rome. Uh, we want to look together, beginning at, in the very first chapter, 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 17 and reading through verse 23. Here again the word of the Lord. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring Word of God. Again, the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts always be accept acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Captain Charles Plum was a fighter pilot during the Vietnam War. He was on the Kitty Hawk, an aircraft carrier. On his 75th combat mission, just five days before his tour of duty was to be up, his plane was shot down by a surface-to-air missile. He was able to eject from the cockpit and to parachute safely down, but into enemy territory. He was captured and spent six years as a POW in a communist prison camp. He now lectures all around him about the lessons that he learned as a result of his very trying ordeal. One day he tells a story that when Captain Charlie and his wife were dining in a restaurant, a man came over to his table and said, you're Captain Plum. You flew jet fighters off the aircraft carrier Kitty Hawk. You were shot down. And Plum asked, well, how in the world did you know that? He said, I packed your chute. Plum gasped in surprise. And with gratitude, the man shook his hand and said, I guess it worked. <laughs> Plum said, it sure did. If your shoot hadn't worked, I wouldn't be here today. Captain Plum said that he went home that night and he couldn't get to sleep thinking about this man. He said, I kept wondering what he would look like in a Navy uniform. Dixie cup hat. Big bib in the back, bell-bottom trousers. He said, I, I wondered how many times I might have passed him on the Kitty Hawk. I wondered how many times I may have passed by him and not even said, good morning, how are you? Or anything. Because you see, I was a fighter pilot. And he was just the same. Plum said he thought about how many hours that sailor had spent in front of a very long table, down, deep down in the bowels of the ship, carefully weaving the shrouds and folding the silks of that chute, every chute, each time, holding the fate of someone he didn't know in his hands. Now Plum asked his audience, who's packing your chute? Everyone has someone who provides what they need to make it through the day. And you know, we're perishing people. We are. The Apostle Peter reminds us of that when he says, We were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from our ancestors. Not with perishable things like silver and gold. Now, of course, he's not talking about being saved or being a splat mark by a physical parachute. Peter is 
talking about a Christ shoot, a provision sent by God in Jesus, spiritual standard equipment to save us from ourselves and our sins. It's the only thing that will save us from that kind of fall, that fall that began in Eden with Adam and subsequently passed down to each of us generation after generation. A fall from grace. A leap from the paradise God intended for us in His creation. Ransom. Restored and spared. We've been rescued by the precious blood of Christ, Peter says. The blood of Christ shed on the cross is the parachute of our salvation. With it, we're able to touch down on solid ground without the splat. We're given a chance to start all over again. It's like we've been born all over. Now, understand that I'm not one to attempt any kind of verification myself. But folks who do know say the most important thing about parachutes is you have to trust them. You're not always going to be able to see them since they're packed up tight and they're strapped on your back. Or rather, you're strapped to it. You're not supposed to fiddle around with it once you get it on. You should test it in the safety of your living room. Once they've been deployed, you, you know you really can't control them because the rush of the wind and your fall cease to that. You simply have to trust them and put your faith in them as they open over your head like a giant billowy mushroom, beautiful, all to save your hide. Peter's point should be clear. God has provided the parachute. But it is we who must trust it was God's plan for Jesus to save us from the foundation of the world. The divine department of research and development put the Jesus plan in place long before we began to spin sinfully out of control, falling headlong toward eternal destruction. And just before impact, right before humanity bottomed out in hell and death, Jesus was revealed at the end of the ages for our <coughs> sakes. He popped onto the scene and provided humanity with the means to stop, to stop its descent into a life of shallow existence, of quiet desperation, or what one author has called a postmodern malaise of contented apathy, or what scripture calls rebellion, disobedience, sin. Could be one, all of the above, one from column A, one from column B. And because of this, Peter says, you have come to trust in God who raised Jesus from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are set in God. You know, the purpose of Jesus' sacrifice of himself isn't a, a, to give us a nice little recreational life, jumping out of a perfectly good airplane for the thrill of it, but to save us from death in order that we might have a new and more abundant life, a life where we can trust in God and set our faith and hope in Him. In other words, the point of the Christ shoot is to send us back up flying again, flying high and flying right. Maybe for the first time ever. So, what does the life of perishing people look like? Now, according to Peter, it involves the purification of our souls, of cleaning out all the junk that's up in there by obedience to the truth. The truth being the life, death, resurrection, and glorification of Jesus Christ. Nothing cool or clever, nothing ironic or abstract, nothing new. It's obedience. 
is a deep and heartfelt connection to the one person sent by God to show us the way to live and to rescue us from despair and death. When we are obedient to Jesus, when we truly are disciples who are learners, we're tied to the shoot so tightly that it can hold us even if we start to fall. No more splat. Now Peter wraps this passage up by saying that the purpose of this faith is to, for us to have genuine, mutual love. And if that's not clear enough, he says, love one another deeply from the heart. One of my favorite preacher types is Barbara Brown Taylor. She tells a story about her nephew Will's first birthday party. Now, as you might expect with a toddler's first birthday party, he was the center of attention, especially when he started doing his little happy dance. Everybody took pictures and filmed and all that. But all of a sudden, one of the other small children, a jealous child, an older child named Jason, charged over to Will and he shoved him as hard as he could right in the middle of his chest. And Will went down bottom first, then his head cracked on the hard floor. No one had ever heard it before. He didn't know quite what to make of it all. And after a moment of stunned silence of shock, he began to howl, but not for long. His mother came and picked him up, and she hugged him, and he stopped crying. And the first thing little Will did was to toddle over to Jason. Now, he understood that Jason was the cause of his pain. But since jealousy and meanness was all new to him, he didn't know what to do. So he did what he always did. He put his arms around Jason and laid his little head on that little old meanie's body. What Will did to Jason was to put an end to the meanness in the room. See, that's what love is. That's the kind of love that, 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 that Peter was talking about. The kind of love that Jesus talked about. Not some kind of warm, fuzzy feeling between like-minded friends who think alike, act alike, and watch the same news programs all the time, but rather the plain old who took all the meanness of the world on himself and he ran it through the filter of his own body, repaying evil with good, giving pardon instead of blame, trading death for life. Amazing. And you can call it divine reverse psychology if you like. It worked once. It can work again. Whenever God can find someone else who's willing to give it a try. Are you willing to give it a try? To show mutual affection even with people you disagree with. To love one another from the heart, regardless. Are you willing to purify your soul? To get all that past junk out of there? By your obedience to the truth of Christ. Can you set your faith and hope? The same God who raised Jesus from the dead and gave him glory. And if so, you'll be like you've been born all over again. You might find yourself sailing on the wind of God's Spirit, avoiding the hard landing of sin, of being saved from despair, rescued from regret. Why? 
Because it's Jesus who packs your shoot. As a matter of fact, he is the parachute. Amazing. The other day, I, just the other day, in this past week, I saw Captain Charlie's TED talk that he gave a number of months ago. He said something like that. He said this, adversity is a terrible thing to waste. Six years in a North Vietnamese prison camp called the Hanoi Hilton, enduring abuse at the same time as Admiral Stockton and John McCain, communicating with one another with little pulls on ropes, little codes that they had to make up in order to stay sane. He said he remembers feeling bitter and he got a message coded to him that said, you know, acid does more damage to the vessel it's in than to what it's poured on. And Captain Plum said, I had to let go of all that. And so in a time of ours, certainly a time of adversity, certainly a time of less freedom than we might be used to or even what we might like. In the time of a little pause, it might be good to ask yourself the question, who's the one packing my shoes? Who is it that gives me what I need to make it through the day? Is it all the stuff out there? Or is it those people who invested in my life to help me make a difference in the world? Who's really the one packing your shit? Who or what really gives you what you need to make it through the day? Is he or she or it? Or they really enough. Ultimately, I believe the answer is the only shoot packer that matters is Jesus. Amen. Our closing hymn is an old, old hymn, one of my favorites. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And as you're sitting in your home today, I invite you to go to the Lord and ask the question, Lord, help me to see what it is, who it is that packs my shoot. Those things that are fleeting and fading away, Lord, replace them with yourself. Help me to trust Help me to trust. Let us sing together as we stand.
your sufficiency for us, that you are all we need, that when we trust in your grace and your goodness, when we allow you to pack the shoe that helps us to make it through the day, help us to trust in your grace and in your mercy, and help us to feel your Holy Spirit's presence. And now as we go, O oh Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us that we might go in the peace of your Spirit. The gentle shepherd may guide us beside still waters and be with us wherever we go. We pray in the name and Spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.